Recently, we discussed cholelithiasis, when a gallstone is stuck in your bile duct and the complications that causes. Now we're going to discuss its evaluation and management. So how will you know that you have cholelithiasis? Well, it causes a very characteristic pain. It's a colicky pain in the right upper quadrant, right along the bottom of your rib cage, just below the right nipple. And it's often associated with nausea, vomiting, and it's gonna be amongst the worst pains that you felt. It's likely gonna drive you to the emergency room. And when you arrive there, the ER doctor is gonna get some basic labs. They're gonna get a complete blood count and a complete metabolic panel. That complete metabolic panel is likely gonna show that there's inflammation in the liver, and it may show that your bilirubin is already rising. If you have a stone stuck in your bile duct, it's gonna be preventing the excretion of bile, and so that's gonna be accumulating in your blood. We're also gonna see that your white blood cell count is elevated. And that may just be an inflammatory response, but it could also suggest that you're starting to develop sepsis. Seeing these labs, your ER doctor is likely going to get an ultrasound of the liver because these labs are pointing to the liver as the primary cause of your problem. Ultrasound is an ideal way to get imaging because it is very sensitive for seeing if the bile ducts are enlarged and it might even catch a stone stuck in those bile ducts. And that's very helpful information to get rapidly. Another thing that's great about an ultrasound is it can be done directly at bedside, which makes it quick and perfect for the emergency room. When there's certainty that you have a stone, or if we see a dilated bile duct and really high liver enzymes in bilirubin, the picture becomes clear that you probably have a stone stuck in the bile duct. When there's not yet certainty, we need to gain some more clarity. And we will often do that with an MRI. That's chosen as a second test because it takes much longer to procure that imaging, but it is very sensitive and it can get a beautiful picture of the bile ducts and see if there's a stone stuck in them. Once we're sufficiently convinced that there is a stone stuck in the bile ducts, then we consider doing an ERCP, an endoscopic retrograde clangiopancreaticogram. An ERCP is a specialized endoscopic procedure, and like other endoscopies, the patient is asleep and comfortable while we introduce equipment through the mouth to gain access to the intestine. From there, we introduce equipment up through the bile duct. We make an incision, and then using a balloon, sweep the duct, clearing out any stones that might be lodged within. Separately, a surgery called a cholecystectomy is performed in order to remove the gallbladder to minimize the risk that this problem recurs in the future. Usually when there's a stone stuck in the bile duct, there's more stones already in the gallbladder or sludge that can cause similar complications in the future. We typically think that the incidence of having a recurrent event in the next one to two months is about 50%. So that's a pretty high risk. And for that reason, we recommend that a cholecystectomy be planned during that initial admission or at least within coming weeks after the patient has recovery. Sometimes people are a little bit hesitant about having their gallbladder removed. And here it's important to impress upon the fact that the pancreas and the liver really can suffer from cholelithiasis. Pancreas and the liver are vital organs, whereas the gallbladder, not so much. And so it makes good sense to remove it, sacrifice it in order to ensure the safety of the vital pancreas and liver. Earlier, we discussed how the patient's initial evaluation tries to make a determination of how likely it is that a stone is stuck in the common bile duct. And the reason to try to be pretty confident of that is that there is a distinct risk in performing an ERCP of causing a complication of pancreatitis. We usually estimate that risk of around 5%. And for that reason, we want a pretty high degree of certainty that there is a stone stuck. The flip side of that is that sometimes there is a stone present in the common bile duct, but we don't see it with the MRI or the ultrasound. And these patients might go to a cholecystectomy. And there we have one more opportunity to find a stone. The surgeon can perform an interoperative cholangiogram, which takes a final picture of the bile duct after the gallbladder is removed. And it may be in that moment that we finally see that there is a stone stuck. And for this reason, the timing of the ERCP and the surgery can be different from case to case. It's once we have that certainty that there is a stone stuck that we proceed with the ERCP. I hope this information helps you better understand the management of cholelithiasis. Please subscribe to the channel to look for future information on how GI doctors manage biliary disease. Thank you and be safe.